this is where it gets difficult for landscapers uh, and contractors that are working outdoors. You know, they're up against the elements and this is what we have all winter generally. And this is supposed to be the height of the summer now and uh, we're in June, uh, early June, and it's not good at all when you have this coming down. It can affect everything you do. So you've got to try and work smart and what you don't want to be doing is undoing what you've done. And that's just a, a big no-no. But there you are, we'll get on with this now. Uh, we've done our cuts around the, the edges and now we're going to start moving this sub uh, base here out of the way so we can start paving on again tomorrow. Hi, it's Johnny Boy here. Just a quick video. We're down here in Swansea. Uh, the weather's not good. It's what us landscape contractors have to put up on a regular basis through the winter and even in the summer. This is June now and we're supposed to be having good weather and it's not good at all. It can affect all your work, what you're doing. But the message is today, subscribe to the channel. I want to get more subscribers on the channel. It'd be good if you can do it. I was amazed the other day that one of the guys said to me that he'd been following me for years, loved the stuff while I'm producing. And then he said that he forgot to subscribe. So if you haven't, subscribe, please. And hit the notification button. Have a great day. See you soon. five in the digger um, not good not good for landscapers and uh, I just you can put the, put an awning up or a gazebo to work under but a, a gazebo is never going to cover all of it I see some guys laying two or three two or three gazebos out. it's not good you know it's difficult and then you still have water running down um, what do you do Well, I'm afraid that's it for today and uh, rain has stopped play. Ah, got a bit of cleaner to there yes he was hoping it it would rain well this is where we're at this morning we got to start coming along there and hopefully we just turn around you'll be able to see we're going to be literally coming across here four or five slabs running backwards and forwards and we're going to head over that over in that direction so a fair bit to do well here we are we haven't had time to set up the camera this morning um but Got the suction cups over there. We're coming right uh, in respects of falls now. We don't need to put a streamline on there. It's running perfect. But when we start coming this way, we will run a streamline fr from here, from this point going that way. But we need to get to this point here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start staggering these across down here now and bringing it round here. So we come virtually level and then we can run through. So we just gotta mix some more muck up. Well, here we are, sunshine at last and um, no, I haven't bought you any time lapse, and no, I haven't asked you to subscribe. And do I want to show you a video with me slowing the back of a slab? No, not really, not today. But what I want to show you is this. Look at this. Now, Richard makes a lovely cup of tea, but Liz has done a, a toasty, right, with cheese in and spring onion, right, and then on top of it. Look, we have here, and with a smiley face. Look at that. What an absolute superstar is our Liz.
well, this is our mix this morning. We've, we've had a little bit more moisture to it, but that will, that will form a good ball. Look at that, that's absolutely perfect. And that's not gonna dry out too fast. So we're gonna start from here and get that one in first, and then we're gonna work back down this way. And we're gonna take one of these cuts out now and get these in here now. Let's have a look from this angle so you can see. There they are there. And we've got enough mix to go all the way down there and get that done. As I said before, once we've got these laid and it's gone off, it will allow us to walk on it and put that track saw, that little TC125, the Ruby one, on a track saw nice and parallel. We'll be able to cut it all the way down nice and neat without any uh, staggered uh, ends. So it'll just line up perfectly. It'll be spot on, hopefully. So we've got our bed ready here. We're using a, a semi dry. It's nice and moist. And when you hold it, it will form a ball. And uh, it's difficult to do it just with one I know, but there anyway, it will form a ball and it will hold together. We could put like a little bit more cement in it, possibly. But remembering when we look at the cement that we've laid previously, it's gone off down there. It's absolutely solid. It's not going anywhere at all. But then when you look at the back of the slab here or the back of the porcelain tiles, this is a 1.2 by 600. We're using a priming slurry from Bal Adhesives and we haven't skimped with it. And we want this patio to stay down. And when we look at the cost of using a little bit more priming slurry, you know, it's about it's about risk and reward. And certainly by by putting on like this, like as I've always said, like buttering a piece of toast when you were a kid or a piece of bread and butter when you go in and you slap the butter on when you were a kid and it's nice and thick and you know that it's gonna adhere. On the back of these these units, they are nice and clean, so we don't have to worry about any factory dust, manufacturing dust that accumulates on the back of the slab and this is stuck really well now because that's a cementaceous priming slurry we've got cement here in a screed so it's dna basically it's going to bind together really really well but the beauty of this this is made in the same way you would make um not exactly the same but the idea is that we're not we're reducing the water that we're actually putting in our mixes and the reason for that is that water is basically not compressive the more we compress our mortar bed the the better it will be for its longevity and integrity it's going to just it's just as more value it's in the same way as i've said that like making a, a block paving brick they're absolutely solid they're driven over they're walked over they 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 take a lot of a lot of load and the idea is this, when this is compacted, we've, we've pushed that down now, and now I've loosened up a little bit on the top, and that will ensure that we get a good solid foundation underneath our slab. And we we'll call it a foundation because that's what it is. It's supporting that slab, and it's a full bed. It's a full, full bed. This is a slab that we've had sat on the lawn here, and when I arrived here this morning, there was prime and slurry, there's a big lump on top of there. so. That's what's left. Start again. So, this morning when I arrived, there was a big lump of priming slurry on this slab here. You can see it. The slab is nice and clean. So, it tends not to stick along the front. So, hopefully, we can get that off and clean that up. And uh, I'll be able to show you that later on. I'll show you the same slab. Well, there you are. That's that slurry mark. You can just about see a little bit of it just there. Well, I've only just scrubbed that with a sponge. And you're going to ask yourself, well, why is it so easy to move off the face um, and not the back? Well, the back is a different finish on the back to what the front is. It's as simple as that. There's no, there's no, it's not rocket science. The, the back, it'll adhere to the back better because it's probably more of a matte finish than what it is on the top. So there we are. Uh, you get a lot of people saying that they've got staining on their paving, but that's been left on there all weekend and now it's gone. There you go.
So there we are, we've got the cuts in on that side, that's completed now, but we've got to go all the way through and at a later date, as I've said, we're gonna to have to put a picture frame in there. But now we've just got to clean that up. It's so important to keep things clean. I just made a statement. Um, people say to me, do I worry about other YouTubers doing something similar to me? No, I don't, not at all. Because I know I'm <laughs> the best looking one out there. On a serious note, we don't put lashings and lashings of water on this part of the garden. So on the on the patio, since we've just uh, li literally just cleaned it, so we've got a little bit of water, brushed it, a little bit of water again, brushed it again and so on. But you don't want to be putting just lashings of water because it's, it's no good. But you can see down there, let's move over to this side. You can actually see where the cuts are done now. And let me just turn around. So you can see on there, looking down there now, where it's staggered in places, but that's when we're gonna put this TC125 on the track all the way across. We're gonna streamline it all the way through and make sure that we're nice and parallel when we do the final cut before our picture frame. So this is what we're gonna put in. I, I promise you, I haven't put this in yet, so it might be out. So let's have a little look. Um, we could use a suction cut, but let's have a look yeah, So, oh, I don't know. There you are. So you can see, there we are. You can see what the problem is. It's where it comes down on the 45 on the back, where it's, uh, it's stopping the, the slab from going in, so we can't get it around. So we have to take a little bit off the back end, because the 45 is down low, lower, for the surface of the slab here, the finished level. So take that off and see what we've got to do. Take about five, ten mil off. There you go. So, well, I've dry laid it in in the meantime. I'm not going to throw the back of the slab, and this, the reason for it, I'm not going to throw this one, is because we've got the picture frame that's got to come in and around there. So we've got a bit of a gap here now, but once we've decided where the picture frame is going to be, we can cut back through here, mark it through there. We can take it out, cut it, put the picture frame in, and then we can slow this down after. And uh, that's just what you've got to do. So there's the triangles in, but remember I've got to put the picture frame in there. We've got another couple to go along here, but we've got some pots to put in. We can, here we've got to all total black, no orange, outer frame so that's all black it'll just blend in better we've got one over there and uh we can't walk on that side so we just got to take it easy so we can drop back on this as we head out along here and this way so we're um using the bowel external point primary slurry let's just read what it says on here you can read it yourself but it's uh BS 7533 compliant. It's flexible, excellent bond strength between base and pavers or tiles. Fast and simple to use. Only require mixing with water. Excellent coverage. Porcelain Bond Plus. Well, I can vouch for this. It's like something to a blanket. But it's good. Well, here we are. This is where we've got we've done the cuts down there. Got some cuts along the back. We've got to get into the corner, which we'll tr probably try and do tomorrow. Lay another couple over there. Uh, gone down that side over there by the conservatory. And we started to head over this way, but also we get the cuts in here now for this meandering edge. And as you can see, I've soaked that patio, cleaned it off, but the water dries pretty fast on porcelain when it heats up, so. But it's looking good, I'm pleased with it. So this is how to lay a porcelain patio part two so we started off this morning by getting those cuts you can see on the time lapse now uh, we went moved along there you've got to be so careful when you're moving the porcelain around the last thing you want to do is chip it because if you chip it you've got to cut one again you can f you may be able to turn it around and reuse it 
but you do want to be chipping your porcelain and as we found out today we went along the the wall and we went along part of the, the back door we started to get the cuts in there but we've got a manhole tray to use there and in, um, an inset tray and we've got two back gully offers that we have to or two offers rather that we have to uh, cut out at some point as well but we need access to it to gain access we've got to let the slabs go off for a couple of days then we started to come around this side of the conservatory as you can see and we're still going to be using the tc125 on here cutting a nice straight edge and that will allow us to put our picture frame in but we're soon moving on with this patio and it's quite a big area and uh, hopefully we'll move right the way around the conservatory and take it where we have to uh, finish off and then we can start working on the picture frame and once the, the we've cut out for the picture frame you'll find that things will start moving on quite rapid i'm really looking forward to grouting this particular patio because we're going to be using probably about maybe using the aspects but either way it's a three mil joint again and it fills up the gaps finds every little void if there's any void underneath though we're using a screen mix and as i said to you before using a screen mix it's just a little bit more solid and it gives it a little bit more integrity from then from using a wet mix wet mixes uh are full of water water is not a compressive product uh, liquids are used for hydraulics because it doesn't compress so what you need to do you need to reduce the water and by you reducing the water your laying course your bedding mortar will compress better giving it more integrity so that's it for today many thanks for watching this video don't forget to subscribe hit the notification button and remember remember this please be courteous with your comments it's so important to respect the channel we listen to everybody's comments we take it on board and we learn from you guys out there and girls that join uh, and follow the top landscapes on youtube have a great evening take care see you tomorrow there is without doubt there is without doubt out there lots of tools for cutting porcelain but this little xgt this little makita has been absolutely brilliant um, I mean, you use one of these little super thin blades. This is a, a, a ruby one, but there are other products out there. Uh, and this is the hardened Dura, I think is a dry, dry cut. You've got to make sure it will tell you on the blade, but make sure you put these blades the right way around as well, because I've put them around the wrong way before now. Let's have a little look, look at the, um, the blade on that. I showed one the other week that was all blackened on the outside uh, for whatever reason, whether that was for the porcelain or me, but I don't think it was me, it was the porcelain. But as a little, as a little saw, um, this has been absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's done so much work. The only thing is the battery went the other week and I tried all sorts of things to uh, get the charge back in it, but I couldn't do it. So I'm gonna have to order another battery because one is just simply not enough. Well, we're back on the job this morning. Just a quick recap, we've got to do these cuts across here. But yesterday we went right down that side over there. As explained, we've got to get into the corner. So we're gonna try and lay another slab over there. So we can start heading in that direction and uh, try and get as many of these little cuts in as possible as we go along through the course of the day. But my main consideration is getting this paving around the corner around here. We're going to come across here and down this bit to the guttering there on that side past those doors. So that's going to be just a path coming down here and then sweep around over this side. Well, this is a, a Clark's tray, and uh, to be honest, it's not the the best I've seen better than these before. This is what happens, you have a little bit of... It's not quite straight, and uh, we can adjust that though, but still annoying that they actually they have got these these frames aren't that, that brilliant. I know that You've got the Savage one, the Peter Savage trays as well. And normally the Clarks are, are okay, but it's okay on that side, nearly. But what you doing? Stock isn't available. Hmm. Well, it's just here that we've got to put the tray, but I've got to work out the picture frame as well, so let's see what we can do. Well, there we are, by myself. Uh, at the moment, so that's the ins uh, inset tray. And I've got a phone call coming in, and that's the mark of the inset tray.
and then we're gonna cut with that. Go. I've been absolutely mumbling the last two clips as you would have noticed. So what we're doing, this inspection tray has got to go in there. This is the only one that was available. It's a Clark's tray. It's not the best, it's okay. It's not the best, but we'll have to just mess around with it and make sure that the, the plastic is lined up because when you look down here, the plastic is just bowed a little bit and it will show up, uh, but you've got no alternative. Uh, you can use the, um, this is Clark's, but you can use the Peter Savage ones, which is which is a good one. But this is the only one that was available down here. So we've marked the outer perimeter here, okay? There, so I've got to cut on the outside of that line, okay? And remember, as long as I cut the outside of the line, what that will allow, it will allow for, for that tray now to sit down in here, okay? And um, if we need to clean the face off and take, take a mill off, we can do that with that little vanity blade, the little, uh, the little 115, the Ruby 115. We've got one of these, I haven't got an Henry, Henry's blades on. Make sure you don't switch this on. This is fully charged. This is this XGT. Um, do you know, I never remember names of tools. So we've got the super thin blade. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut that out now. Hopefully, when we're gonna take our time, don't force it. When you're coming along here like this, and you're forcing the blade, there's a lot of you that that could crack through there. So we've got to go through here and go through there and just go down parallel all the way. We have got a mark uh, either end. We've run it through with a string line because our picture frame will be going on the outside of this tray. So if you can imagine, this tray is going to be sat in there and then we're going to have a picture frame running down on the outside of there all the way across. So that'll sit absolutely perfect, but we've still got two gullies to do on there as well. So. A fair bit of cutting, which is going to slow us up, mate. Well, what I've done, I've, I've cut into the corner on here as well. We want to, really, in theory, we want to be able to use, use this piece for the inside of the tray. But I'm a bit concerned about that cracking through there, so I've had to cut through here. We've got some spare bits we can put on the inside, but I've done a cut through here, so hopefully it will break off a little bit more easier. And uh, I may just do a cut through here as well, because we just don't want that bit to crack, because it'd be a nightmare otherwise. I'm sure you understand. So, as I said, we've cut this out now. We've got to take this, this mortar out now. But what we've done, we've put this pot just like that. You put bags down as well. Make sure that you don't have any debris, but you've just got to do something about it. You just can't let everything fall down inside your chamber. It's so important. So we'll put that in now, start cutting this out and uh, see where we get then. We've taken these out of here, all right? You must, must ensure that you take these out. I remember a client years ago telling me that they were gonna force it all out because she didn't know how to undo these, which is a bit annoying. And then we've got these little handles like that. They pull up quite, they're quite good handles, this one, actually. And then you just, there you are, and that's the tray underneath. And a rubber seal as well for the smells. So here we are. Alison doesn't have to make me sandwiches because our Lizzie, our client, look at this, absolutely fan dabba dozy. Well, there's the tray that's in, and you can see on the right hand side, um, I've put those little spaces in now just to show the true line of the uh, of the tray, and uh, so annoying. But, uh, but that's how the trays come sometimes, and it doesn't actually sit square. 
in the in the tray. The trade's in the frame rather, but you know. So there we go. Well we got that tray in. Um it didn't take too long, it was just messing around a little bit fiddly like you so it's a bit annoying. And uh just having a cup of tea in the shade at the moment. Uh, just gotta get on with uh, laying some paving over yonder, make sure that uh we keep on top of it and keep moving forward. Um I am gonna try and get a cut in here today. But people are asking me about these and uh these square tops they come with an, an like an extension. I don't want that one there. There we go. And uh, this is flow plast. There we are flow plast. So if you're looking for those, but the reason I like these is because this is in black and not orange. A fundamental mistake by a lot of companies. And if you look at it, it's good plastic. <laughs> if there is ever good plastic, it's nice and square and uh, solid. And it just looks so much better. Take a look down there. Yeah, pretty good. It's so important that uh, only you mix up what you can actually manage, certainly on a day like this, because if the cement starts getting exposed to the sun too much, it will just die and it just goes off like quite rapidly so only mix up what you can you can manage but you can see this a nice consistent mix all the way through and be absolutely perfect as a bedding mortar and it is as well action okay and again we're actually showing out to slurry the back of the slab and uh what you'll find on, on a day like this, the uh, everything seems to go off so fast. Like so, just mix up what you can manage. Really. You don't want to be mixing up too much. But as you can see, what I tend to do, I tend to put it on nice and thick, and that's how I like it. It's as simple as that. And uh, I think the other thing, a bit of a tip, is that what you should do is maybe before you bring your slabs round, if you haven't bored them round, is just wet them off. You don't want the back of the slab being wet when you're putting the slurry on because it just moves around. But the reason you want to use the water is because you want to cool your slab down because that slab was actually hot and I should have chucked some water on it first, but we'll chuck some water on that one just to cool it down. So porcelain does get really hot, probably a little bit more than, it tends to sort of hold its, its heat. I think it does in comparison to sandstone because sandstone, is breathable but this this is just like it does get really hot complete <laughs> completed for the day not a completed job and uh, we made steady progress am I happy with it well, I have to be but you always would like to get that a little bit more but the thing is whatever we're doing we're doing doing it right and, and that's the main thing you don't want to be going back and putting things right I have noticed I have noticed there are a couple of slabs that have come a little bit loose and uh, 
that always happens for whatever reason and it shouldn't happen uh, but people walk on slabs it's not necessarily the customer it's us sometimes and when you're doing a big patio on here it's the job to remember what was laid and what wasn't laid so the idea is always try and work on another area and push on and, and the area that you've you've worked on don't start on it the next day keep off it until the following the, the next couple of days so just try to avoid working in the area that you've worked on the day previously it's so important you want to be undoing your, your good work so we'll be coming around the corner tomorrow around here we've got a sub base in and we hope to be heading down here along this part here and then we can start thinking about those cuts do i get those cuts in as i go well yeah i should do really and this is something i can do tomorrow and uh, when you're doing the cuts it slows you up a little bit but it's getting done and it's not a laborious task when you've got loads and loads of cutting and you sort of hit and miss lay a few along here tomorrow around here and then we can maybe one two three four five cuts we can get in along there and uh, or be good if you're interested to see how this line works out in parallel to the conservatory it's all been pretty good so far but we'll see there we are being cute five pound 18 for your cement which is pretty good value especially in comparison to travis the other day Another glorious day, brilliant customers here, cup of tea every morning, and even the neighbors across the road are real good as well. And you know you, you're in a good area when everybody's friendly. Um, well, here we are this morning. That's where we got yesterday. We're gonna do, as I said, we're gonna put those cuts in this morning. I'm gonna get those cuts done now, and then we're gonna get a, a mix on over there, and we're gonna start laying our paving, and try and wrap them around the corner. And we've been really, really lucky because everything seems to be falling pretty square. I've had to sort of manipulate it a little bit, but nothing that you'd notice. But we've got the bolt down now and we're going to get round there and try and get this cut in. But try and do the cuts as you go along as well. If you want to do them all in one go, that's absolutely fine. But it's, it's a lot more easier to sort of like as you go along and get on with some paving. And you seem as if you're making progress. So it's a good feeling. So got to sort of try and sort of I'm a bit clever in the sunshine and uh, you know we're in the shade over there so the cement won't be drying up so 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 much like so only mix up what you can manage good morning it's me it's Johnny boy just having a quick cover just want to say thank you to everyone that has actually watched the videos over the years we're about to hit 10 million views i never even thought that we'd get there like you know never even thought i'd get to 20,000 subscribers but we did could we do some more subscribers yeah but at the end of the day what we've got the party's great as we're going on now so thanks uh to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification button taking part in the channel over the years nearly 10 million views it should be probably around about thursday maybe maybe thursday we may just get there but 10 million views absolutely fantastic i'm over over the moon with it and you just think for a moment all the filming the footage and all those jobs that we've done and uh, i still need to improve but hey thanks very much have a great day so what we're doing now is that yesterday we have two slabs that we chipped right next to each other and uh but we still make use of it and we're not going to waste the slab because of a chip like this so i've cut off the remaining part of this piece is ready there for a cut and i'm going to take this off now and we can still use this as the cut and, and the same will apply to this one as well so Try not to waste your, your porcelain because it's really, really expensive. Porcelain is expensive and it's a good product. It's a durable product, but when you're moving it around, you've got to handle it in a certain way. There we are. I've brought some samples down this morning of these porcelain wood effect planks. They're from styled.co.uk. Uh, great company to, to deal with. But what we're going to do, we're going to be making a feature wall uh, using that product hopefully uh with this existing retaining wall that we have here 
and we've got to think about this consideration this consideration we have to take into account uh, we're going to step back around here whether we're going to put a coping stone on the top but it's definitely going to be one of these planks that's going to go across there whether we put them in a, in a horizontal format or whether we put them in a vertical format what's your thoughts but we are going to come up maybe a little bit higher as well well you don't want to see my my bag in this shot now so we haven't pushed in that corner yet by the gate but we have put some cuts in along here this is where we're going to cut this shape out here got one more cut to go in there one there and then several along this bit but what we've actually done today we've put some cuts in along the conservatory and uh which was good because it was running it wasn't it was running out just a couple of mil uh but when you look down this line here that line parallel to the the conservatory was running out like six five mil over two meters so that wasn't bad at all and the other thing what we've been able to do we've been able to move all this soil over here down that part uh with the machine and we've been able to stone this up as well we don't want to be you just don't want to be laying your mortar too thick like we were just on the on the last little bit because it was dropping off like but we've taken stock now and we've got, had two ton delivered by a company down here a guy called richard and um he's bought us some type one that really does bind together and then we'll put our lemix on top of that and when we start bedding in but it's coming on and we've given it a wash down just got to brush that piece off over there now but it's all good it's all good it's all coming together nicely now it's a big old patio we haven't done one like this for a long time so it's a big old patio and as i said it's got a wrap round here over to the summer room so there you go there we are just got to give this a bit of a, a splash this morning with some water it'll help bind it together but just coming around this side we've got an inspection tray here um that manhole there make sure it's nice and parallel well that's nearly the perfect paving mix the only thing i would say is that it could be a little bit more gritty it's supposed to be sharp sand and it's not far off but it could be a little bit more well there we are this is the ruby suction cup fantastic bit of kit not overly expensive just absolutely fit for purpose for these 1.2 by 600 millimeter porcelain flags tiles porcelain slabs whatever you want to call them but they work absolutely perfect and i believe that you can get these from its absolute gorgeous day here in garreton in swansea and uh we've got to watch and we're putting some slurry on the back of a slab the last thing we want it to dry it too fast but this is okay if you look at that it's okay but you can see how it starts creating a crust on the surface straight away we're going to add a little bit more on top of that uh porcelain tower now we're going to put a little bit more a little bit more towards the edges well this is where we've got to today and uh we're making some progress got the bed ready there the only thing as i said there the it does tend to dry up your mortar so you've got to make sure you probably put a little bit more water in there or a retardant to, to sort of slow it up and not drying out too fast but it's coming on and we're getting the, the bulk of the paving down the, what we call the field paving the field tile getting it down and uh, then we can start thinking about the cuts but we've overlaid along there and we're going to overlay along this side and then we've got the inspection tray or the recess tray to do over over that side so important when you having to do a tray that you take a video like this or a picture to show the indication of the state of the bottom of the the manor and that doesn't look good
Well, this is where we left off yesterday. We've cleaned the bed off and I'll put another one in position, but we had to take it back out yesterday because we got a chip on it. But this is where we're going to cut again on this one as well with the TC125. And we'll get the, the track on and we'll be able to show you how we're doing that. So I haven't been showing much lately because um, it, working in the heat is, is a bit of a pain. You have to work fast and you haven't got time to set the cameras up. So we're going to have a meandering cut around that edge, which I said loads of times. So we've got to get a couple more cuts in there today. Over here, got the train yesterday. That's all set in. Um, the inside of the, the manhole is really dirty, but we've got to get these cuts over here as well. I'll try and get the bulk of this done, but we've got to drain just here. No, we, we know roughly where it is, just, just here. There is uh, a pipe that we have to pick up and take to that corner. We bedded in those little cuts yesterday, so we're going to put the track saw down here and we'll set it up and cut along here. There's about three or four cuts that's got to go in along here. One over there, one over there, and then we'll have the shape then. We can mark it for to cut the meandering shape. That one's already done there. But what we've got to try and do is get into this corner over here. Look at this, absolutely fantastic. No sooner I come here, they're absolutely brilliant customers and they've brought me a cup of tea already. We're in uh, Travis Perkins here in Gowerton and uh, I've been coming in here for uh, not long, uh, a few weeks now and Paul in there and the other guys in there and the, the guys in the yard are absolutely spot on and this is a branch that all branches should aspire to whether it's Travis Perkins or anyone um, and if you want to find out about customer service come down and uh, spend a day with them. Well, there we are, end of the day and then the battery runs out and the other battery on the XGT is knackered. There we are. <laughs> we thought we were going to have an early day, but we didn't. We had to do the drain and we laid two slabs. That's it. That's it. Two slabs. We had a bit of running around to do. So annoying. But there we are.